Good day and welcome. It's so good to have you joining us. And for those of you who don't know, I'm Paul yeah, from Life Connect. And like I said last week, we're going to be getting into a new, um, it's going to be a three, possibly a four part series on healthy habits. And I read through a sermon series by Craig Grishel from Life Church. And I've liberally used his outline, okay, because he made it available and he said we can. And I just thought it was fantastic. So I want to talk to you about habits because we've got a new year, new possibilities. A lot of you made resolutions that you've already, like, put by the wayside, that you didn't achieve, that you've given up on. And if you're still sticking to them, man, if it lasts past Feb, I'd be really surprised. Because... Those are just goals we set, but we haven't put a pattern in place to achieve the goals. Now, the pattern is developing a habit, and a healthy habit. You know, often when we hear about habits, we think negatively, but you can have positive habits that are healthy habits that, that make, a, make a positive impact on your emotional, your physical, and your spiritual well-being. And I think if we don't get to this point, we can just carry on like every other year and battle through it and really just like get to the end of, of 2022 and try to start 2023 with resolutions again that we don't achieve. So why don't we change it up? Why don't we actually do something to set us up for success, set your life up for success? Now in his message, Craig Grishel says this, Successful people do const constantly what other people do occasionally. Okay? Successful people do constantly what other people do occasionally. So, all people that you deem to be successful are successful because they are consistently living discipline in their life or in that area of their life. If someone has got a really close relationship with God, it's because they're disciplined in pursuing that relationship. If someone looks like they they financially successful, they are free. It's because they're consistently doing things that other people only do occasionally, like saving. I don't know if you battle with that, man. Put up a sale sign and I'm there. But anyway... If we consistently do small things, it's going to lead to big change. And it leads to big change over time. That's the key, time. And we've got to look at examples of people who were successful and what they did over a period of time that resulted them in being a success. So let me go look at the Bible and I look at Jesus and I don't ever hear Jesus, okay, he was the son of God, so he had a bit of a of a, a leg up, you know, over, over us. But yet, I don't ever see Jesus complaining, saying, oh, you know, these people. I don't hear him saying, man, these disciples are really working on my, ne my nerves. I don't hear him saying, man, dad, I want to go home. I see him having... A habit that allows him to function optimally. And you go read through the account of his life and look at how many times he broke away, left the people to spend time with God, to pray. Those were his times of refreshing. That was his habit that kept him going. Paul, the apostle Paul, had a habit, you can go read it, of always going to the temple. That is where he got what he needed. It was his habit that allowed him to function out there. Sean Covey said the following, Our habits will make us or break us. We become what we repeatedly do. Okay. We become what we repeatedly do. So what are we doing? 
is 2022 gonna make you or is it gonna break you well i want to be made i don't want to be broken and i'm praying you want that as well but then i've got to look at stuff that are going to build me up and not drag me down or further down into the gutters of life i've got to start focusing on things that are, are positive things that are healthy things that aid my walk through life and my relationship with God. I need good healthy habits. What about you? Can you say amen to that? Do you also need good healthy habits? Now I get it folks. I get this all sounds rather familiar because this is generally the way we intend to start every single year, isn't it? But this has to be different because our intentions never get the results. Our actions are going to. And it's time we start with actions. When you go look at the Apostle Paul again, and we go look in Romans, and in particular Romans 7, we find him in the same boat where we found ourselves for the last number of years or our entire lifetime. He's saying, you know, there are certain things I want to do that I don't do, and the things I don't want to do, I do. Yeah, I can relate. I can really relate to this because I find myself in that boat with him, doing things I don't really want to do, and the things I should be doing, well, I don't always get to do them. What he's saying in layman's terms, you know what? I want to lose weight. But that tub of ice cream's got my name all over it. I want to get fitter, but I first want to finish watching this series. I want to I want to spend more time with Jesus, but you know, I've got all these books I want to read. Whatever it is, you know, I want I want to consistently go to church, but Man, it's a beautiful Sunday. I'd rather go to the beach. You know, he's saying, I'm doing the things that I don't want to do. But then we see, go read through Romans 7. We see the shift in his thinking. We see him taking a completely different approach. It's like he gets to this place where he is absolutely fed up with his weaknesses. And I mean, I know some of us are there. I'm fed up with my weaknesses in certain areas. And in Romans 7, 24 to 25, here's what he says. Listen to this. What a wretched man am I. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ. Do you know what he's done? What do we do? He's connected his failure to his identity. What a wretched man am I. Don't we do the same when we fail, when we give up on a resolution or a goal we set? We get really down on ourselves. Paul did the same. He said, what a miserable person I am. Man, I'm no good. I'm a failure. We need to stop doing that. But then we read on. And we see the shift in his thinking coming. And he says, who will fear me from this life of mine that is dominated by sin and wrong decisions and death? And then he looks to the source. And this is key. He looks to Jesus and he says, the only answer is Jesus Christ our Lord. He is our only hope. It's only Him that can deliver us. It's only Him that can give us victory. It's only Him that can set us free. It's only Him that can give us peace. It's only Him that can save our life. It's only Him that can help us change our habits. He's our strength. He's our healing. He is our hope. You see, folks, we need to look to Jesus, where before we've been looking to ourselves. It's only Jesus that can make all things new. 
that can make good come out of a wrong turn that you took, that can lift you up when you've fallen down. But we keep going to ourselves and we keep beating ourselves up. But all we need to actually do is work on our disciplines. And our disciplines should honor God, should lead to a successful life. Because successful people do const constantly what other people do occasionally. I know you've got good intentions. I know I've got good intentions. We want to lose weight. We want to get our debt settled. We want to be healthier. We want to be closer to God. But we fail over and over and over again, don't we? Year in, year out, we've got more or less the same resolutions. Why is that? I want to give you three reasons, okay? And we're going to be getting into some of them in more detail next week. So I'm just going to give you an overview. First one, first reason we fail over and over again is this. We focus on the what, but we don't understand the how. We focus on what it is we want to achieve, but we don't look at the actions required to get us there. What we need to do, what we need to, or how we need to perform to accomplish the goal we set. We just got some pie in the sky, but we don't have a method of getting there. And at the end of the day, your goals and my goals are more or less the same. We could serve, survey survey a hundred people and we would come down to more or less the same goals and it will be in these areas health finances relationships our dreams for the future and our well-being because we all want to change and we all want positive results to come from our change don't we i haven't heard of anybody who says look this year 2022, man, my cholesterol was 5.6, that's for losers, I'm hitting 16 on the cholesterol count, I'm going to push it up, I don't hear anybody saying, man, this year, I want to gain 10 kilos, I want my tummy to be my mark of honor, we don't do that, do we? We don't, we don't have anybody saying, look, this year I want to go out and I'm going to double my debt. I want my interest rate. Man, I want double-digit interest rates on all of my loans, on my credit cards. We don't get anyone who intentionally says at the beginning of a year or sets a goal, I'm only attending church once a month, or I'm only going to attend church Easter and Christmas. We don't have that. we got good intentions, and we want successful goals, don't we? Yes, we do. But then you need a system in place to get you there, to give you a life that matters, because that's what you want. We all want a life that counts, a life that matters. We all want a blessed life, a quality life. We all want something dramatically different in terms of results than what we've achieved up to now. But then we've got to get our head out and we've got to look at the how are we going to do it and not what we want to achieve. James Clear wrote this book, um, Atomic Habits, and he says in this book, listen to this, he says that winners and losers generally have the same goals. He says that successful people and unsuccessful people have the same goals. And nothing could be truer. But successful people achieve the goals. Unsuccessful people don't. What is the difference? I don't know of any coach that goes to his team at the beginning of the year and says, man, this year we want to end fifth. Okay? No, everyone says to the team, we want to be the champions. That's what we're aiming for. We don't, we don't say when we get ma married to someone, you know, man, we want to get to five years 
and then maybe seven and then divorce. No one starts out like that. Everyone starts out, man, this is the love of my life. I'm going to make it last. I'm putting it in. This is a one-shot deal. You know, we do things because we've got success in mind. We want, we want to achieve our goal, all of us. But we don't know how to put a system in place that allows us to. In that same book, Atomic Habits, James Clear says that goals don't determine success, but systems do. Goals do not determine success, but systems do. Your goal, that's your end desire. That's all it is. It's a state of being. It's a place you want to reach in the future but doesn't help you get there having it. You've got to have a system. You've got to have actions in place. And even if you go look in, in the Bible for examples, you're going to find examples of people who achieve goals because of their systems. You're also going to find unsuccessful people that failed because they had no system in place. Look at Daniel, and we'll look at his life in more detail. What made Daniel stand out out of all the young men what made him rise above even the three that were that were um, chosen eventually to rule Persia what made him more than the others it wasn't because of his giftedness that all helped it wasn't because of his esteem that helped it was because for years and years and years he had a system in place that same system helped him to walk into a lion's den and walk right out after spending a whole night there the systems because for years and years and years he had put a system in place that grew his faith in God and his faith was rewarded you see he had decided early on every day no matter what, I'm stopping what I'm doing three times a day and I'm spending time with God. That built his faithfulness. For years and years he did that because I want to tell you again, you will not rise to the level of your goals. You will fall to the level of your systems. His system set him up for success. So we need the same sort of system. If you want to build your faith, if you want intimacy with God, if you want to increase your knowledge of the things of the Lord, you need a system in place, a righteous system like that in place. It isn't enough just popping into church once in a while. It isn't enough like attending a connect group every once in a while. It is not enough just being in head a Christian, but not being a believer in heart. You have to have the right systems. And when we change our systems, we will get the results that we strive for. And when we start getting the systems in place, the outcomes will fix themselves. It might take time, but consistently doing the small things will bring, bring about big change. The second, second, sorry, the second reason why we don't achieve our goals is this. We don't see progress fast enough, and so we give up. We live in this instant world, drive-throughs and press of a button and all of this, and we're conditioned to expect instant results. So what happens is we start off really well. And for three days a week, we get up early and we go, why? we go walk five k's. And after two weeks, we weigh ourselves and we picked up a kilo. We want to improve our relationship with our spouse. So we decide the things that I would normally argue about, I'm going to walk away from. And three times you get this right where usually you would have had some comment, you would have been sarcastic, you, would, you walk away. But the fourth time, 
you explode and you find yourselves yelling at each other all again. You try to pay off your credit card, but then they got this big flash sale or, or your microwave backs up. What do you think in these times? You wrongly conclude that small good decisions don't matter that much. Small good decisions don't matter that much. That is what we end up thinking. If we look at the flip side of this. So what do we do? We spend three hours playing games. And the wife doesn't complain too much. We skip church one weekend. And it doesn't have this big dramatic impact on your spiritual life. You eat a half a box of chocolates and you can't really tell. So what do we conclude? That small bad decisions don't matter that much. Man, our life, my life and your life is the sum of all the small decisions that we make. Small bad decisions really wreck a life at once. But over time, folks, they add up and they take its toll. Your small good decisions do the same, but they don't take a toll. They bring reward. You see, your hard work, your self-discipline, your sacrifices, your faithfulness, those things are not being wasted they've been stored up and you're going to have a mighty harvest as a result a mistake we do make those that we compare ourselves to other people and we look how they doing and we think man they got it made and i'm struggling along here but what we fail to see is the sacrifice that they have made. We fail to see the consistent small decisions they have made, small good decisions that they have made that have led, led to exceptional results. We don't see all the sacrifices. We don't see all the hard work. We don't see the getting up early. We don't see the commitment. We see the success, but we don't see what it took to get there the late nights, and all those other small, consistent disciplines. It's the things that no one sees that bring the results that everybody wants. In Galatians 6 verse 9, it says, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give us up. Let us not become weary of doing good. Now I'm taking this slightly out of context. I'm making it fit, but it fits so well. Don't give up saving a little bit each month. Don't give up counting calories when you eat. Don't give up getting up early and going for a walk. Don't give up. Do not grow weary in spending time with God or going to a connect group or attending church. Don't give up because over time, those little, little things that you are doing, those decisions that you are making are going to have a great, great result. Point number three. Our distorted identity sabotages our success. Okay? A distorted identity sabotages our success. You know, the enemy tells you who you are not. Really, he does that. He tells you who you are not and he connects all your failures to your identity. It's like what Paul was doing in the beginning. Oh, wretched man that I am. That's the enemy talking and he's connecting your identity to the failures of your past. Oh, you didn't do it right. You failed you. You said you were going to do that. You didn't do it. And he makes you feel like you're a loser, like you're incompetent. He makes you miserable. 
Oh man, your identity isn't who he says you are. His identity is God says you are. Look at Moses. Moses wasn't a good speaker. God used him as a leader of a nation. Gideon was the weakest in his clan or considered the weakest. He became one of the greatest warriors Israel ever produced. Paul was the least and the most unworthy person to become an ambassador for Christ. Yet God used him. I want to encourage you, make goals, put actions in place to achieve them, but change how you think about yourself. And maybe you should stop with the do goals and get to some how goals, or no, stop with the do goals and get to the who goals. You see, do goals say, I want to read more, I want to... I want to get fitter, I want to sleep more, I want to spend less time on social media. Those are things you want to do. But the who goals, I want to ask you, who do you want to become? Do you want to become a, a true man or woman of God? Do you want to become a godly husband, a godly wife? Do you want to be a bold witness? Do you want to be clean? Do you want to be sober? Do you want to be financially free? Do you want to be generally healthy? Do you want to be... Someone who you can be proud of. Well, your identity will shape your actions. Your identity will shape your actions. What you think about yourself will determine who you become. That's how important it is. So you need healthy habits because healthy habits are... All, no, you need a healthy identity because a healthy, healthy identity creates positive habits. You are not a loser. You are not incompetent. You are not a failure. You are not hopeless. What does the Bible say about you? The Bible says you are an overcomer. You're victorious, that you walk in power, that God is with you. It says a whole lot of positive things. Let's hold on to that as we set goals. Let's change a way we think about ourselves. Let's have more self-belief, not because of our ability, but because of God in our lives, so we can then believe more for ourselves and for our future. Your identity is going to shape the outcomes of your life. Choose to believe what Jesus says. I want to sum this up. No single action is going to change your identity, but multiple actions over time. That is going to help change your identity. It's going to help change how you see yourself. And small, good decisions over time eventually changes identity. And ident good positive identity creates positive outcomes and good healthy habits. Amen. Can I give you those three points again? I want you to think on this. I want you to really go make some notes on what you've done in the past or what you haven't done in the past and what you're going to do now. Point number one, we don't succeed in seeing through on changes because we focus on the what, but we don't understand the how. We'll look at that more next week. We don't see progress fast enough and our distorted identity sabotages our success. I really want to pray that you decide you want a better future for you and your family and that you start putting some goals in place and then link actions to that goals. May God get the glory for the change in your life and the change as a result of your life. Amen. Let's close our eyes quickly. Lord, thank you so much for speaking to our hearts. Thank you so much for enabling us to become more than we currently are and enabling us, Lord, to develop healthy habits. We ask now, Lord, that you take our hand and you walk us through the change that you want for our lives, those things that you are going to lay on our hearts, Lord. May our lives glorify you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for sharing. I want to I plead with you before we go. 
please share the message with friends. We want to get the word out there far and wide. And we depend on you, our online partners, to do that. Invite your friends to like our Facebook page, to subscribe to our YouTube page, to link up with us on Instagram. Help us change the world one art at a time. See you next week.